Hello, I'm Dr. Lola Giusti, and I'm the Clinical Coordinator of Radiology Services at Arthur A. Dagoni School of Dentistry at the University of the Pacific. I'm Dr. Elham Madabi, and I am an Assistant Professor and Radiology Faculty at the Arthur Dagoni School of Dentistry at the University of the Pacific. Today we're going to show you different types of rectangular collimators and how to use them. It's super easy to reach into the x-ray tube head, remove the round collimator, and replace it with a rectangular collimator. This is a way you reduce radiation to your patients up to five-fold. It can be used for adults as well as children. We highly recommend that a positioning device be used to limit retakes at least until you master this technique. Rectangular collimation reduces beam scatter by confining the beam to an area barely larger than a number two film or sensor. You can use the collimator for a size one or pediatric sensor as well. For this reason, we think it's a good idea to use sensor attachments and bars to align the film or sensor with the x-ray tube head. So go ahead and position the x-ray sensor in the mouth as you normally would. You may have noticed that within the plastic circle, there are four corners. We like to say that these corners are your friends. They will help you position the rectangular collimator exactly opposite the film or sensor. In this way, you minimize retakes and unnecessary exposure to your patient. You'll notice that the sensor is oriented vertically for taking anterior periapicals. You'll also use the vertical position for vertical bite wings in order to avoid cone cuts. Using the rods and collimator in proper alignment will help you avoid cone cuts. You'll need to remember to rotate the collimator to the horizontal position for horizontal bite wings as well as posterior periapical x-rays. As you're moving through your full mouth series, you must remember how the sensor is oriented and remember to rotate the collimator appropriately. Horizontal with horizontal and vertical with vertical. Now we will show you what happens when alignment is not done properly. Here's an example of a cone cut made with a round collimator. Here's what a cone cut taken with a rectangular collimator looks like. The vertical white area to the right of the image may or may not interfere with the essential elements of the image. This is why it is crucial to use a positioning device to align the sensor or film properly with the x-ray beam. These images were taken with rectangular collimators. Some would argue that these images are improved by reducing the scatter and fogging that occurs with round collimation. We encourage operators to be patient. Like most things in life, it will take some practice to master this technique. We've identified four situations in which rectangular collimation can complicate image capture. When taking images behind a rubber dam, during endodontic treatment, the round collimator is much easier to use and more forgiving. In patients with long roots needing periapical x-rays, the round collimator works much better. And finally, in patients with severe gagging tendencies where the time between placement and exposure can be longer with a rectangular collimator, we do not recommend using it.
you can find a variety of rectangular collimators for a reasonable price. Some are under $100. We wish you success incorporating this easy-to-use technique in your practice.